Editing a video podcast has never been easier thanks to some amazing apps that we're gonna explore in this video. But one thing still baffles creators, and that's how to edit a two-person host and co-host podcast that's recorded in the same location. Specifically, how do you achieve that cool active speaker view or the active speaker view hack with one camera? Well, I'm excited because in this video, I'm gonna unpack and show you how easy and accessible that is, and I'm gonna show you the two different ways to do it. First, I'm gonna show you a really cool active speaker view hack that you can perform live and record directly directly into Riverside. Riverside will then allow you to use all of the really cool new AI features to edit your podcast within minutes. This is my favorite technique for creators because many of us just don't have the time to spend three or four hours every week editing our podcast episode, but we still want our podcast to be edited at that professional level and to switch between speakers and do an active speaker view hack while just using one camera for our show. Well, this technique that I'm gonna show you allows you to do just that and you're gonna love me for it. But I also know that many of us are very interested in the editing process, that we love it, that we wanna learn and that we do have that time to put into our show and we want to learn about the most advanced way that professionals are using to edit video podcasts and so we will also explore that in this video together and i will share with you my famous switch and cut method this is also something you're gonna love me for by the time you're done watching this short and hopefully very helpful youtube video you are going to level up your podcasting skills let's get right to it Hey, welcome to PSS. I'm Steven, author of the Video Podcasting Playbook for Professionals and the co-founder of Podcast Your Way, our new adaptive podcast growth and education platform. You gotta check the platform out. You can try it for free by going to podcastyourway.com. Mind-blowing stuff. But let's get right to the editing hacks. I'm gonna share with you step-by-step -step how to achieve this for your podcast. And the first technique will actually require you to experiment with doing a camera switch method while you're performing live. So yes, this method will require you or your co-host, or if you have an on-set assistant, to switch the cameras as you're actually performing your podcast live. And to show you how cool and how easy this is, we're going to use OBS Studio. Studio. OBS is a free app that you can download. I'll leave the link to download OBS right where you're watching this video. But what I love so much about this setup is you can use OBS to generate a virtual camera. And then you can use Riverside to record your podcast. And this is something I recommend to creators for many reasons. You will get a slightly higher quality of video if you record directly to the SD card on your camera. But that quality loss is an easy compromise to make with the convenience that you get from recording directly into Riverside. And this is for file management purposes. You never have to manage these crazy files on your computer but it's also because it allows you to sync up your two podcast microphones with your camera and all of that is taken care of in Riverside. So we're going to get into Riverside in a minute and look at their brand new feature that allows you to invite an in-person guest into your Riverside studio which actually records the two different podcast microphones together with the one camera. But first let's jump into OBS and set up a three camera shot using just this one camera that you're seeing here. But I'm going to need some help. I'm going to need a co-host and for this I have my trusty co-host, Margarita Rosa. Please, Margarita Rosa, please. Look at the camera, Margarita. Look at the camera. She should be a little shorter than me. Here's my mark, I'm on that third point. So Margarita, you go right here. Hi, Margarita. Okay, so she'll be right here. I'll be right here-ish. There we go. Okay, so you're gonna love how cool and simple this is in OBS Studio. So here we are in OBS. This is what you see when you first open it up. And the first step is to create a new scene. So here I will click on the plus button right here and create a new scene. I'm gonna call this... What's the name of our podcast, Margarita? I don't know. Hold on, I need a good name for a podcast. Can you give me some humorous and romantic even podcast show titles for me, Steven, and Margarita Rosa, my co-host? Flirting with the truth. Chemistry check. The long pause. Love interrupted. Almost a love story. Off the record. Love interrupted. I don't like it. I, I think it's, you know, ChatGPT is just not good at comedy. Has anybody else experienced this? Steven and Margarita after dark. Steven and Margarita. Ma, Margarita after dark. Steven and Margarita after dark. All right, so now I have a new scene. This is Steven and Margarita after dark, which is pretty ridiculous. We should rename that. Let's just call it podcast. Let's just call it podcast, or you know what we could call this? Let's call this scene camera one. This video is gonna... 
Now that I've set up a scene, I will have to set up a source to add to the scene. And here in OBS, you can add tons of sources to one scene. The only thing we need here is to add a camera. So again, by clicking this plus icon here, I can add a video capture device. When I do that, I can call the Sony a7 IV or whatever camera I have plugged in and say, okay, this works with web cameras. This works with any camera you have plugged into your computer. Now, if you are using a Sony camera and you don't know how to plug that into your computer, you will need a little cam link adapter. So just comment the word Sony right where you're watching and I'll send you a list with all the Amazon links and doodads and extras, dummy batteries and Sony camera settings and everything you will need to use your Sony camera as a video podcasting camera. But here in this menu that pops up, we will now choose under device cam link 4K. And that's the little cam link adapter that I have. Look, here I am and here's Margarita Rosa. So we'll go ahead and say, okay. And I'll have to resize this to fit the frame here in OBS. So there's my shot and it's looking really good. It looks clean. I've got both me and my co-host and you could really just edit your podcast episode this way. But what if you wanna have that cool active speaker hack? Well, what we're gonna do is right here where it says camera, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this one above here, the scene. So we just have this one scene, camera. We're going to control click or right click on a PC and it will bring up this menu and we're gonna choose duplicate. From here, we can now change this to camera two. We could even change this to Margarita. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate Margarita in the same fashion, control or right click, duplicate. We'll name this one Steven. And this first one, camera one, we can actually control click on that and choose rename. We could rename this to the wide shot or off together or whatever you want to say. So now if I come down to the Margarita shot and actually just click here into my canvas, I can just start scaling up on this footage. When I click on it here, you'll see this red square appears. Well, I could just grab the corners and start scaling up until I see just Margarita. Now for your shot, you would likely be a little farther away from each other. So it would be, but this illustrates the technique that I'm trying to illustrate perfectly. Then I can go to Steven's shot and repeat the same thing for me. There we go. And now, as you can see, I can switch through these scenes and I have a wide shot. I have Margarita and I have Steven. And you can switch through these scenes by just pressing the down and up arrows on your keyboard. So if you really want to be far away from your computer and you wanna be comfortable, you can even just get a wireless keyboard or even route a keyboard from your computer to a comfortable place where you're sitting with your co-host. And just remember to switch between whoever's speaking. So in this way, you are going to achieve the active speaker view by doing the camera switching yourself. So now that you have your camera switcher all set up, you can come over here to the very right hand side under the controls section here in OBS and choose start virtual camera. And that's it. Now, if you come to Google Chrome and open up your Riverside dashboard and click on the big red record button, you can join the studio. You'll be taken to the green room here in Riverside, which is where you can check your camera and your microphone. So now instead of FaceTime HD camera here, I can choose OBS virtual camera. And look, that's the camera that I've set up in OBS. I can say, Steven, I'm not using headphones right now. And I can say, join studio. This is where you can add an in-person guest by clicking on add participant and choose in-person guest. And here is the feature that will allow you to add a second microphone. So if you have two USB microphones, for example, you can plug both of those in. Or if you're using an audio interface, you can select the different inputs from that audio interface here. This is an amazing feature because later when you go to edit, you can utilize Riverside's amazing audio treatment plugins like the Smart Mute, which will mute Margarita when she's not talking so I don't get any of the noise from her microphone and vice versa. So in this fashion, by doing your camera switching here in Riverside, you can utilize all of the fun Riverside AI editing tools. Your camera switching is already done for you. So you can remove filler words automatically, remove the pauses, use the smart mute feature. You can edit like you would a Word doc. Listen back in two times speed so that you're only spending 30 minutes or an hour editing each one of your episodes instead of three or four hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and click X here to hide this people so we can really see what's going on here. And let's check out the switching functionality in action. So here, when you're ready to record, you and Margarita are all set up. You just throw it into record. Riverside gives you a countdown. And now here we are. Welcome. And of course, I'll have to go over to OBS to get the camera switcher to work. So for this illustration, then I will put these side by side with each other so you can see OBS on one side and Riverside on the other. And you would wanna have this kind of a setup going on. Steven is a very attractive man. Oh, thank you, Margarita. Thank you. I love him. 
and then we would fight. But look how cool this is! I could switch between her and me just by pressing the arrow button. And so this takes a little practice, but whenever your co-host is talking, you just switch to them, and when you're talking, you switch back to yourself, and then give yourself an occasional cutaway of both of you together. If you get lost in conversation, you could just leave it here at the two-person setup. This is a really cool hack that many of us can take advantage of right now to get that awesome active speaker view recorded into Riverside. So now if I press stop in Riverside, we can full screen it over here. Riverside comes up with this cool menu that asks us if we want to go to our project, which we'll say yes, let's go to our project. And I'll X out of my live studio here and we'll let that project process. When you go back to your projects, Riverside defaults here at the Made For You tab where it gets to work actually making content for you from the episode you just recorded. But you could also click on recordings here and choose edit. And now here you are in Riverside's editor. And as I mentioned, you can now edit this like you would a Word document. And as we scrub through the episode here, you can see that my camera switching was already done for me. And now over here in the AI tools tab on the right hand side, as I mentioned, you can remove pauses, remove filler words. You can apply the magic audio, which is amazing, and also do the smart mute feature. This will clean up each of your microphones separately and your mind will be blown about how easy and intuitive this editing is. We do have a video that we just recorded right here that Veronica did where she really goes into the nuts and bolts of Riverside. You can also try Riverside for free by going to pss.media slash Riverside. And when it comes time to upgrade to one of Riverside's plans, you can save 15% by using our promo code PSS at checkout. So what do you think? I know that deserves a serious thumbs up for that awesome active speaker view hack, and you're probably really excited to get going with you and your co-host now. But as I promised, we gotta look at what the most advanced users and editors are using to achieve the same effect in the edit after the fact. And it may not surprise you that the solution that they're using for that is Adobe Premiere. And Adobe Premiere Pro affords some really amazing options for this more than any other editing solution that you'll find really. And that is because of all of the different features it has with its multi-cam options. This is where I have shared with you on our channel before my famous switch and cut method that you could check out that original video here, but I'm gonna cover it in a more simplified, quick start way right now. So here we are in the dashboard that first pops up when we open Adobe Premiere, and all we have to do is click on new project. From here, I can say test podcast and choose create. Premiere defaults with this import tab here where you can actually import documents into your project. I typically just click right over onto the edit tab here, and this is where I import my media. Premiere operates in different panels, and once you understand the different panels, you'll really get cooking in Premiere pretty fast. The panel to the bottom left corner will default as your project panel, and from here I can navigate and find a podcast file to edit. So if I go to my downloads, I downloaded this one here of me and Veronica. I'll pop it in here, and let's actually rename it to podcasting. And if I want to create a new sequence from this file, now all I have to do is drag this file from this panel into the panel next to it, which is my timeline panel, and there we go. And you can see here that this is a wide shot of both Veronica and I doing our podcasting thing. It's a pretty cool shot. And you could edit it just like this in Riverside using all those cool AI features, or you can do the famous switch and cut method here right in Premiere. And you know what, Margarita? You're making me nervous. Can you leave? <laughs> okay, good. So now check it out. This is super easy. I'm going to show you how you can make a multi-cam setup with three different shots in Adobe Premiere. The first thing we're going to need to do is unlink this footage. So we're going to separate the audio from the video. We do that by control or right-clicking on the footage here in the timeline. When we do, a context menu pops up, and from this context menu, we can choose unlink. Now this video is by itself, and with just the video layer on top selected, we can command or control C for copy, and then just later in the timeline, we'll paste it. And you know, let's do that twice. Then we'll bring all three of them on top of each other. This one on top here, we're gonna zoom in on it. Now, if you wanna zoom in on it in Premiere, you can click on this little icon right here. It says toggle direct manipulation when you hover over it. This actually allows you to see those similar scale things we saw in OBS. And you could just make it bigger like this. What I prefer to do, however, is go to our effects control panel and you'll find that up here in the top left corner. Whatever clip you have selected or that's highlighted in your timeline is the clip that you will be manipulating here in your effects control panel. And here you'll see all of these controls, scale, position, rotation, opacity, all the fun, fancy things. So we can now zoom in nice and big on Veronica 
and get a really cool shot of Veronica here. I like to keep her kind of balanced still off to the left side and then we'll keep my shot balanced to the right side. So we've got a really cool shot of Veronica there. Now I'm gonna hide her track by clicking this eyeball button here. Notice when you hover over it, it says toggle track output. And we'll do the same thing with the layer underneath it and me. See, we have her at a 223 scale. Maybe we could just copy that same scale up here and type in 223. And I'll just kind of move over. That way we've scaled in the same amount. And like I said, we'll balance me a little bit more to the right side. So now as you can see, if I were to toggle me off, we've got this wide shot. I have my shot above it and I have Veronica's shot above that. Now all we have to do is highlight all three of these together and again, control or right click to bring up that same context menu. You'll be getting into this context menu a lot in Premiere. And from here, let's go ahead and choose nest. And we'll put all of these beautiful shots into a nest together like little baby birds. And we'll call this multicam. And now if we select this new green item that was created, we'll once again control or right click on it. And from the context menu, you will see multi-camera. We'll need to go in there and select enable. Now we have enabled and created a multi-cam. However, when you look in your program monitor here, it just looks like it's one camera. But in fact, this has created a multi-camera. And you can now switch between these shots by pressing the one, two, and three keys on your keypad. If I press one, it's the wide shot, two is me, and three is Veronica. You can also see your multi-camera view if you come here to this little wrench icon. Notice when you hover over it, it says settings. And when I click on it, right now I'm looking at the composite view. You can see, cause there's this little dot there. If I click on multi-camera instead, I can actually see my multi-camera. Notice this one corresponds with the number one. When I click here, this will correspond with the number two or the Steven shot. And here it corresponds with Veronica. I'll go back to this and actually go back to my composite view and demonstrate real quickly the switch and cut method. So now that I have my multicam created, I want to relink the video with the audio again so I don't lose track of the two. So I'll go ahead and highlight both of them together by click dragging and creating this little marquee situation here that allows you to highlight a bunch of things at the same time. And now I'll control or right click and when I do, the context menu pops up again and I can select link. Now that I'm linked, I can get cooking with all of my fun Premiere quick keys. A couple of those quick keys that you'll want to memorize are the plus and minus key that'll zoom in and out of your timeline, as well as the C key, as well as all of these tool keys along here. If you hover over all of your tools, they actually give you the quick key. Your selection tool is a V. The other one you'll use a lot is your razor tool, which is a C. And those two will really get you cooking in Premiere. So now as you go along your timeline and you're listening through your edit, you can cut and make cuts like so, and we could just chop this up and you're making all of your cuts, you're deleting these parts in the middle, but you can also switch your camera whenever you want by just pressing the two key. Maybe on this shot here, I could press three. Notice you can do this after the fact too. So when you're reviewing it again, perhaps on a second pass of your edit, you're like, oh, you know what? I actually wanted to have the camera on me there. You could just press the two key and it goes back to Steven's shot, or you could press the three key and it goes back to Veronica's shot. In this way, you can go through your edit and you can do the switch and cut, as I call it, which means that you are doing your camera switching and your cutting at the same time as you pass through your podcast edit. And finally, another little quick hack in Premiere that I'm sure you're gonna give me a thumbs up or some hype here on YouTube, is you can listen back in double speed in Premiere too. It does sound a little chipmunky, but you do that by pressing the L key after you press space bar for play. So I press space bar for play here and L sends it into double speed, which can effectively really save you a lot of time when you're editing. And I do crack it open and look into it in a lot more detail on this video here on our channel, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are here. Leave some comments. And since you are looking into this two person video podcast situation, if you wanna see actually a multi-camera setup, we have a YouTube video right here that you should check out where Veronica and I together are doing that more classic diary of a CEO multi-cam setup with three different cameras with the co-host Same Location Podcast. Go check it out now. Hey, welcome to PSS. I'm Steven. I'm Steven. I'm Steven. Yeah, I'm Steven. Author of. I'm author. <laughs> author of. An author of articulation. <sighs> Playbook for little <laughs> Author of the video podcasting playbook for pros. Yeah, the video podcasting playbook for professionals. Whew.
playbook for playbook for prof playbook for professionals. Whoa. Why did you name your book that? I don't know.